This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Stick around to find out how you can get 83% off in one month for free. Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and today I want to explore with you the amazing SpaceX milestones that we currently expect to see in 2020. Of course, we can't forget the massive year that SpaceX has had in 2019, but quite a few delays crept in there due to other projects being developed, such as Starship and Crew Dragon development. Even still, SpaceX launched 11 Falcon 9 rockets, one of them with the incredible Crew Dragon Demo 1 flight, and two groundbreaking Starlink missions, sending packs of 60 satellites into orbit. Then of course we had two Falcon Heavy missions, both with remarkable double booster landings. And topping all this off, Starship prototype Starhopper was launched and Starship development kicked off furiously right into this year. That is really ramping up now, of course, with more exciting news just this week, so stick around for that. And with all of these achievements down, you know what? This year is going to be much bigger and we are just seeing the tip of the iceberg. Let's start with Crew Dragon. This spacecraft will potentially be the very first vessel to send US astronauts to the International Space Station from American soil since the space shuttle was retired in 2011. Not only that, but the first ever commercial vehicle for US astronauts. Since 2011, of course, all crewed flights have been provided by Russian Soyuz rockets, which was only ever supposed to be a temporary situation. There was always a plan to replace the shuttle, but it wasn't until 2014 that NASA's commercial commercial crew program selected both SpaceX and Boeing to develop independent options for crew transport, that being SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing's Starliner vehicle. Now there have been a number of delays in development around both vehicles and it was expected that both companies would have flown with crew on board last year. SpaceX's Crew Dragon vessel has had a number of issues, in particular with the parachutes that needed to go back to the drawing board mid last year. Since then, SpaceX has improved the design with the new Mark III parachutes. These have now been fully tested with a range of drop tests and in the recent in-flight abort tests. So there's been delays there, but also another setback last year when some extreme testing of the Crew Dragon capsule resulted in an explosion. So more delays for SpaceX there as well. It is worth remembering though that these extreme tests are designed to push vehicles to the limit. So failure is not out of the ordinary. Earlier in 2019, SpaceX had a very successful orbital flight test without crew on board to the space station. It autonomously docked, undocked and returned to splash down in the ocean. A huge success there and this is a feat that Boeing's Starliner still has not achieved. Boeing has also been plagued with problems of their own with an abort engine anomaly resulting in a propellant leak back in 2018, uh, a parachute that went missing in the pad abort test in late 2019 and then more recently of course the orbital flight test ended early due to the vessel freaking out and ending up in the wrong orbit after a clock error. Everything here is just a reminder to everyone that space vehicle design and travel is hard, certainly something that shouldn't be rushed and going back to the drawing board is all part of the development and testing process. After the delays, this year is going to be different for SpaceX's Crew Dragon. The recent in-flight abort test in January was perfect. The systems all worked as intended, whilst also offering the enthusiasts out there quite the show. The Falcon 9 booster was intentionally allowed to flip over out of control and explode in this amazing fireball right after the capsule fired up its eight Super Draco engines and accelerated away from the booster destined to explode. This was the last big test needed prior to certification for an actual crew crewed flight with astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley in SpaceX's Demo 2 mission. The Crew Dragon vessel will return to a splashdown at sea like we witnessed in the Demo 1 mission. This is incredibly exciting. Now, there's no exact dates for when this flight is going to take place, but the current estimate is in April or May of this year. It's going to be a groundbreaking mission and will be the first time SpaceX has launched any rocket with humans on board. As far as we know, Boeing Starliner will launch sometime mid-year, so pending any new delays or setbacks, the very first commercial crew flight will be done by SpaceX. So yes, keep your eye out for this mission in a few months time. It's going to be quite the event considering the effort put in for the Demo-1 mission. That mission landed NASA an Emmy as tweeted here by NASA's administrator Jim Bridenstine. 
So up until this point, SpaceX have flown many cargo missions already to the space station using the first Cargo Dragon design, the first CRS-1 mission launching back in 2012 when the Falcon 9 was very new. The very next cargo mission is CRS-20 due in March, and this is the last mission for SpaceX under the first phase of commercial resupply service contracts. 18 missions have been successful with one flight failure with CRS-7, so we've seen huge success with this vehicle, but there are some things that it can't do. Firstly, it can't autonomously dock to the International Space Station like the new Crew Dragon. It needs to be grappled by the Canada Arm 2 and slowly berthed with the station. It also has two of these quite complex deployable solar arrays for power generation and a nose cone cap that jettisons after stage 2 separation, so that is wasted each time. Now the idea is to use a variation of the Crew Dragon vehicle but spec'd out for cargo delivery rather than crew transport. It'll still essentially be called the Dragon or Dragon 2 and the existing Cargo Dragon will be retired. The new spacecraft will be able to dock autonomously and it will use the simplified solar panels incorporated onto the trunk which reduces the number of mechanisms on the vessel and presumably also lowers the cost. The very first Dragon 2 cargo I believe should be CRS-21's mission due to launch in the third quarter of this year, so another key milestone to check out there. Now if you would like to know a little more about Crew Dragon progress, I've got a more in-depth video about that with more detail about the in-flight abort test. And while you're here, please do consider subscribing. There is loads of news coming up with Starlink, Starship and Dragon 2 vehicles, and I'd love to share all that with you. Now this brings us to Starship development. What we are seeing here is the development of the first fully reusable rocket. No waste at all. Unlike every other rocket in existence, not even SpaceX's Falcon 9 is fully reusable. The second, much smaller stage of that rocket is still lost after every flight. Much better than the competition, but certainly still not perfect. Starship, however, is designed to be completely reused. Two huge stages, the Starship and the much larger Super Heavy booster that lifts the Starship well out of the atmosphere. The booster lands to return back to the launch site to be rapidly reused, and the Starship itself will deploy its payload to orbit, re-enter the atmosphere like a skydiver, and then flip over before touchdown to land tail first. Now last year SpaceX developed a baby prototype of the Starship component which was called the Starhopper. This did a few initial hop tests followed by this amazing vertical takeoff climbing right up to 150 meters in altitude. It was also flying with SpaceX's newly developed Raptor engine, the only full flow stage combustion rocket engine to ever fly, which is amazing as an achievement on its own. Of course, after that, SpaceX developed the initial few prototypes of the full-sized Starship. The Mark 1 version here Elon Musk presented under back in September. Sadly though, the build quality of the ship and also the Mark 2 prototype in Florida wasn't up to the needed standard and a pressure test ended the life of the Mark 1 in this spectacular pop towards the end of last year. This year though is going to be very different. Over the last month, several test tanks have been developed which have now met the requirements Iron standards and will be adequate for the next prototype which will be called SN1. This is being built right now and you will be surprised how quickly this is going to come up and be constructed. The team down at Boca Chica, Texas are, as Elon Musk tweeted the other day, going max hardcore on the design and production of the Starship. Just this week we've seen SpaceX stacking up the beginnings of the Starship. We see it outside here being inspected prior to being taken to the windbreak structure for more construction. We have a new nose cone here, new header tanks, there's loads of work going on at the facility itself with all the buildings and tent structures. The pace of development is now really screaming along. Interestingly we spotted this FCC application submitted here this week indicating mid-March to September for an experimental launch, landing and recovery of a Starship. Starship suborbital test. Now, this in no way suggests that the flight will be in March, simply that SpaceX are getting ready for test flights as early as March. This is exciting in itself. If we see such a thing prior to mid-year, could it be possible to see a prototype super heavy vehicle being constructed as well? Perhaps we may even see an orbital test flight this year. Let me know what you think in the comments. 
SpaceX's Starlink network is already underway now with 240 satellites in low Earth orbit. Each launch sends 60 separate satellites flat packed on top of the Falcon 9 which are then released to separate into various orbital planes around the Earth. Four launches have already occurred and this is just the tip of the iceberg with a Starlink launch heading to orbit every few weeks throughout 2020 with the aim of having over 20 missions completed by the end of the year. That should be around 1400 satellites deployed in 2020. In total there could be around 12,000 satellites deployed by the mid 2020s which could then expand up to 30,000 satellites depending on the demand of the network and how SpaceX plan to roll it all out. This will quite literally change the world with internet connectivity available almost anywhere on the planet. We should soon be seeing the terminals which are the devices consumers will use to connect to the network soon and also get a little bit of an idea on pricing plans for the connection. Once this all takes hold it's going to provide a huge new revenue for SpaceX allowing them to achieve their core objective of colonizing Mars. This new network will be coming online in the northern US and Canada this year and then rapidly expand to near global coverage of the populated world. All you're going to need as a customer is a registered Starlink terminal which you'll just need to plug in and point at the sky. That is it. What is just as exciting in my mind is that the network could be used with road vehicles, boats and aircraft positioned almost anywhere in the world. Potentially it would be handy to be able to just take the terminal with you if you're going away for a few days. As an example I needed to travel away from home for a few days this week. It would have been super helpful for me to just pick up the terminal with me, hook it up to high speed internet wherever I found myself on my own trusted connection. This sort of thing I think will certainly be possible and would mean you wouldn't need to rely on public Wi-Fi with the potential security issues that come along with that. In these situations of course I always use a VPN to help protect myself and that's where my sponsor Surfshark VPN can help you. A VPN or virtual private network is a privacy protection tool that guarantees instant online safety. Surfshark encrypts all of the data sent via the internet so that no one can see your passwords, photos, videos, sensitive data or know what you're doing online. Now there's loads of reasons why you may not want network administrators and internet service providers to track what sites you're viewing. Just one example could be if you have very differing personal views or beliefs from those around you. You can even change which country you're accessing the internet from to access and unblock content. This is super helpful if you want to view content that is restricted geographically, especially social platforms, external news and of course entertainment. Now I don't know about you but I believe the internet should be an open hub of knowledge and with Surfshark you can access content from anywhere and they're the only VPN to offer one account to use on an unlimited number of devices. Devices. If you would like to give it a try and also support my channel go to surfshark.deals Marcus and you will get 83% off plus one month for free. With a 30 day money back guarantee there is no risk in trying it out for yourself. The link is in the description below. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please do take a second and hit that like button. A huge thank you to my quality control squad here for helping me research and proof the material for these videos. If you're interested in these topics and you would like to be part of this follow my discord or twitter link in the description and please do get in touch. In the tile in the bottom left today we have my video last week talking about the new international space station commercial module selection. Starship updates and Starlink 3 launch as well so check that out. In the top right is my latest video and in the bottom right content that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.